Hi again, it's Chrissy, your life skills educator here to talk to you in the fourth session of car buying for return and reunion. We haven't talked a lot about motorcycles, but motorcycles are also another way that um, sailors in San Diego like to uh, use as a way to commute. Um, the other thing that I just want to remind you if you are in the motorcycle market is that you do need to take a motorcycle safety course, which is different than just a, a general driver's license that is required in the state of California. And I actually have seen it taught on base. So consider that you need the motorcycle safety course if you want to use a motorcycle. All right. So let's talk about negotiation strategies. There's several of these here. I think one of the best things that you can do is consider bringing a friend with you anytime you're gonna go see a vehicle in person. Um, whether that's through the dealership, if you're meeting a private seller, if you're going to a lease to own situation, um, consider bringing someone with you and someone who has experience in car buying, okay? So someone who's bought one before, who knows the ins and outs, who you're pretty sure didn't get ripped off, okay? All right, so think about that person and make sure that they bring some of their best strategies. So. Some of these could be, you know, I'm not in a rush. I don't need to see it right now. I don't need a vehicle today. I don't need it next month. I don't need it for a while. That can be something you can use to your advantage. Um, doing your homework, knowing as much as about yourself and about the vehicle before you go in will work to your advantage. Um, more information that you know, the better. Um, think, consider the discount. So actually my mom car that I had uh, I bought it for, I leased it first actually, but I got it from a dealership that wasn't honoring the parent company's uh, deal that they had going on. So they said, no, the price is the price and you better take it because there's so many moms out there who need this minivan, um, which there are actually, okay? <laughs> They're hard to come by. Uh, we said, no, we're not going to purchase unless you honor the discount that the manufacturer is offering. So we use that to, as leverage. Um, consider two shopping twins. Um, that would mean, for example, a Lexus is a luxury version of a Toyota. Um, so consider the basic guts of those vehicles are the same, um, but you will be paying more for basically, you know, bells and whistles and maybe even just an emblem. So consider two shopping twins, a vehicle that will still work really well for you, but um, it doesn't have the sticker price of being luxury. Um, getting a road test is a nice way to have um, a negotiation, you know, get it out being like, hi, hey, you know, I don't really like this, that or the other. Um, I don't think I need a heated steering wheel in San Diego. That just isn't something we use very often. Um, and then consider too, with those options and when you're in that road test, um, if they are very um, insistent that the price is because it has all of these bells and whistles, tell them to take it off. Say, well, I don't want that, so just take it off. They'll probably end up throwing it in the end. Um, like I actually never wanted the backs of the seat TVs, um, so I, got a better deal on my vehicle because I was willing to wait for a little while because I didn't actually want a bell and whistle. Um, consider too, when you go for that test drive, and this is for your privately owned vehicle or the one from the dealership, when you go on that test drive, you're gonna be turning on absolutely everything in that vehicle. You're gonna check the air conditioner, you're gonna turn on the fog lights, you're going to check the, <laughs> the um, heated steering wheel, um, you're going to be moving the windows up and down and left and right. Um, we want to make sure the vehicle is in the best working condition and that don't not test run something um, just because you're trying to be mindful of someone else's time. That's your time, not theirs, okay? Um, if it has a little vacuum in the back or a little cooler that will keep your drink warm, test that out as well. Make sure it works before you take it off the lot. Um, your last negotiating tactic is always the 180 degree turn. I don't want it. I no, thank you. It's not working for me. I need more time to think, or I'm just going to go shop somewhere else. This isn't working. Most of the time, if you do leave the lot and they have a way to contact you, you will hear for them, from them within 24 hours or, or longer. They will say, oh, I was actually thinking that I could get you a better rate um, on that car. 
uh, we could lower your down payment. We could actually take off the TV headset, headset TV, is that what they're called? Um, we can actually take that off and that will, and that will work. Um, another thing that I want you to consider is if you go for a test drive and you're gonna take the vehicle out on your own, a dealership will do something like, um, they will say, well, we need something here at the dealership in case you run off with a vehicle, which is, that's normal, okay? So most of the time they will say, hey, we want your, um, we want an ID, or we want your driver's license, or we want something to the effect. They can use any photo ID or anything with your um, address on it to run a credit check on you while you're there. And they'll say, oh, it's a few points different, so we're gonna have to offer you a different rate or we're gonna not be able to offer you that price or whatever. If you need to leave an ID there, my suggestion is that you also ask for a blank envelope so that they don't use your information for whatever purposes they want you only want to allow them that if that's something you want. And we would rather run those credit reports. We'd rather check your credit score. We'd rather look for a loan outside of their offices because their offices at the dealership are for them to get the most money out of you. So ask for an envelope, turn it over, seal it, and sign your name across the seal. And then you can hand them that driver's license or the ID, okay? So that's just a trick. And that way, if the seal's broken, you know that they have done that and they've basically taken away your trust. All right, so financing options. We talked about this a little bit earlier. You can finance through the auto dealership, but you might get better um, interest rates at the credit union or the bank. Um, you can look at finance companies and there also are internet sites. Know which ones are okay for you to use and which ones are not. We wanna look at nonprofits. You can always call Fleet and Family to check and see if a financial institution is okay and safe for military to be loaning from. We wanna look at a lower interest rate than something that would violate the Service Members Relief Act, okay? All right, so you have options here with your trade-in. So this would be if you had a vehicle and you're planning to trade that in, in exchange for um, the vehicle that you want to purchase. So you can trade that in at the dealership or you can have a private sale. You can just ask for the fair price of the vehicle. Um, so most of the time, if you're trading it in at a dealership, you might not get it, okay? So consider you might just wanna plan on selling that vehicle on your own, selling it to a friend, selling it through an internet sale, or you might wanna use it as leverage to purchase your new vehicle, okay? You can take that dealer's offer or you can um, actually just take it off the lot. And this is also something you can use as leverage. You can say, I just would like that Kelly Blue Book price or slightly under the Kelly Blue Book price because I didn't drive it very much. It's got great condition. Um, I put a couple of additional bells and whistles on it like a towing hitch or something that's useful. So consider um, what the dealer's offers are and if that's something you want to, to take. Remember, you could always leave if you don't like the dealer's offer. Um, you'll also want to consider if you're upside down in a vehicle. Now, upside down in a vehicle means that you have had a vehicle that has had an accident or something or it has been in a flood or something has happened to it to where you are paying on it, but you are not able to drive that vehicle. So this does happen. Um, we've, we know of service members who have purchased a motorcycle or a car, did not get the insurance on it, had that vehicle stolen or were in an accident, and are still paying on a vehicle that they do not own, cannot drive. So consider, consider that um, this can happen to you and we want to do everything we can to not have it happen. All right? So making good um good financial decisions, making sure your debt to income ratio is not too high so that it's not repossessed. And then also making sure that you always, always have insurance on your vehicle. All right. Um, you want to, if this happens to you though, please come to Fleet and Family. Please go see your command financial specialist. You, it's, you're not going to be the first person. You're certainly not going to be the last. So um, just make the smart financial decisions to move forward in the process and not remain stuck. Okay. Um, 
you'll want to look at paying down your loan. You might want to wait before making another purchase. Look at other options that are available for you through public transit. Um, we, we also, as service members, you also have a monthly credit that you can use for public transit. Um, it's called the TIP program. So a certain amount of money you can get onto a card that you can use for public transit. So consider some of the options that you have that might be either low cost or no cost to you for getting around. You might need to go with an, a less expensive model if you're upside down in a vehicle. And then you can also just consider a private sale for a vehicle and not, not using your upside down vehicle. However, this will show up on your credit report. So just consider, consider where you are and Fleet and & Family and your command financial specialists are the subject matter experts. All right, one more, I'm gonna have part five of Carbine and I'll be back in just a moment.